Hello, everybody. Welcome to Facebook Live with Mel Raposo. Today is Wednesday, August 28th, 2019. Oh, gosh. Cannot believe how quick time is going. Anyway, um, hey, Rich, Christian, Patsy, Julie. Hello, how are you guys? Uh, I'm back in the studio, which is a.k.a. my bedroom. I'm going to hope that this thing holds on. I just the heat is too much in the living room, so I needed to come here and um, try it out in a bedroom again. If we get interrupted, then obviously I'll go back to the uh, to the to the hot living room and and start up again. So I apologize up in advance if in fact uh, we get we get cut off again by Facebook. Uh, hey Clayton, Kenny, Wes, Anahita. Aloha, you guys. Thank you guys for joining us, as you always do on Wednesdays. We got a little bit of uh, stuff to talk about today. <clears throat> Hopefully, we get some engagement from the from the viewing audience. Uh, I am running a, another camera again, uh, so hopefully you guys can see me and hear me. Um, I am assuming you can, because I don't have any uh, messages that uh, it's breaking up or. The sound is funny. So if you guys can hear me okay, just give me a thumbs up or uh, just type in a number one. That's the only way I can tell if you guys are uh, are hearing me. So we do have a couple of uh, hot topics on Kauai that the people have, have uh, asked me to talk about today. And, and hopefully we can get some input from all of you. Um, We'll hang on just for a couple of more minutes until the people come in. I know it's it's a busy day for a lot of people. Uh, thanks, you guys. Thanks, everybody. Hey, Larry, how's it going? How's it going? We're going to talk about a couple of things today. White mail, land acquisition, you saw in the newspaper. A lot of people are uh, asking a lot of questions, so hopefully I got some answers for you folks. Hey, Karen and Keith and Allison and Amy, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, again, for those of you that just jumped on, uh, we're back in the in the bedroom, so hopefully we maintain this connection. <clears throat> so if not, we get we get blocked, interrupted. Uh, hey, Kimchi Nine, all right. One of my favorite restaurants, man. One of my favorite restaurants. They get some good Korean food, but I like their kimchi, and I love their meat jun, and their bibimbap is my favorite. So right on, Wesley. Eat up, eat up. So the Waimea Land Acquisition, um, also uh, Kukuyula, uh, some 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 activity going on over there. As many of you know, Kukuyula, the development many many years ago. I was I was on the council when they came in for the rezoning, and there were some conditions that were set on Kukuyula, and they're uh, attempting to to change one of the conditions. So, <clears throat> hey Helena, El Ramel, Kiala. Ona, Ona, how are you? Robert Vitos and Eric, how are you guys, man? Thanks for joining us again. So we'll talk a little bit about Kukuyula. Um, oops. Uh, and then some other ongoings that's uh, going on, not necessarily here on Kauai, but some interesting stories that I found. Um, some interesting stories that I found throughout the state. So we'll, we'll talk a little bit about all of that. So couple minutes, we'll just hang out. Palinapa, aloha. How's everybody doing today? If you don't mind punching in in the message box, how you doing? Hey, Leo, how are you, man? Another faithful follower. Awesome, awesome. Remember, we do this every Wednesday, 5.30 to 6.30, and then you can find me on a YouTube channel, Mel Raposo, and you can always watch the, uh, the replay. Um, rather than trying to go dig it up on Facebook, you can just go straight to my YouTube channel and watch it there as well. Michael Cox, Aloha Lynn and Vaughn, how are you guys doing? Right on, Vaughn. I got your announcement coming up a little later. So thanks for the info, buddy. Thanks for the info. Okay, so we'll get started because time flies when you're having fun. So the Waimea land acquisition. I know a lot of you guys saw it in the newspaper. I got a few, more than a few calls uh, asking about what was going on. Hey, Grace. How are you, Grace? 417 acres. The Faya family put on the market and uh, apparently negotiated with the county. Um, and it appears that the county already purchased the property for 5.3 million. I have not seen <clears throat> it uh, on the council agenda except for an executive session. So I don't know when that happened or if it did happen. I believe the council needs to approve 
that that purchase and i believe that has to be done in open session so we'll, we'll follow along a rich and my son baroni from all the way from oregon what's up man so you know there are a lot of questions about you know what, what are you going to do with the the uh, the property and and i'm told that it's affordable housing some agriculture uh sports complex uh and then the other question was we'll be talking about Kuku, uh, uh, kukuyula in a little bit um and then they asking about where's the money coming from so uh, i did a little bit of research and you know the mayor did in his supplemental budget message did mention it and he did speak of where the funds would be coming from so the it's 5.3 million dollars that's what the cost was the uh, 1.8 million is coming from the Leomano road repairs this is a cip project capital improvement project that's been on the books for a long time so they're taking 1.8 million from the Alio Mono Road repairs. They're taking two and a half million from the KPAL building. They're going to redo the KPAL building and, and get that thing up uh, to a decent standard because, as you know, that, that hey, Sherry, how you doing? Aloha from Kauai. Uh, Bernard Kribalan, whoo, awesome, awesome, man. A bunch of old friends on here. Not that you guys are old, just that we've been friends for a long, long time. Onani, aloha, and Laurie. Thank you for joining us. So the KPL building and the Leomana Road, uh, what I'm told is that <clears throat> these projects are still in the planning and design and permitting stages, so they don't expect to uh, be construction ready this fiscal year. So they're going to take the monies from those two projects. Again, 1.8 million from uh, Leomana Road repairs and 2.5 million for the KPL building. Hey, Roland, aloha. Uh, 500,000 will just will come from the bond fund balance. In other words after they took these monies off of the capital improvement project uh, list there, there was half a million left over so they're going to use that for this uh, land acquisition and then the one that I, I, I still need to do a little bit more research is 1.45 million from the housing development fund uh, and I, I just I want to learn a little bit more before I comment um, hey La Hea. Aloha hey Duke and Dale thank you guys for joining us uh, because uh, you know I, I I know that one of the plans for that that parcel, that 417 acres of affordable housing, but um, I just want to see if any of the current or planned projects uh, out of the housing agency is going to be impacted uh, because of this transfer of funds. So that that's where the money is coming from. I know a lot of you have asked, so I hope I hope that answers your question. Anthony and Hoku, aloha, you guys. 1.8 from Aliomano, 2.5 million from the KPL building, 500,000 from the bond fund and 1.45 million from the housing development fund. Now, let me just say, I fully support land banking. I mean, I, I've been saying that for many, many years. In fact, probably closer to 10 years ago, uh, Jay Fafara and I introduced a, a resolution at the county council urging the administration to land bank every year. Set aside, hey, Steve and Brad, Kippy, aloha. Set aside $5 million every year so we can build up this uh, resource so we can purchase lands when they become available. Uh, and to make sure that these lands that we purchase are near infrastructure uh, and, and near the, where the people are going are gonna to live and, and, and specifically for housing, affordable housing. So I definitely support the uh, purchase of land. There was not, I, I don't know of any discussion that was made on the, on the public floor regarding this specific purchase. I'm assuming the a briefing is going to be held at some point. Hey, Belinda. And at that point, I guess we'll get more answers. So um, I, I just a couple of questions. Is not 1.45 million from the Housing Development Fund. Does that impact our existing uh, programs? The second thing is, did the council really approve this? And if they did, it needed to be done in uh, affordable, uh, needed to be done in open session uh, because it does involve taking monies from existing accounts and moving it over into, into separate accounts. So it was in the supplemental budget and that may suffice. Uh, I'm assuming that they had this thing checked legally. So anyway, 417 acres will now become part of the county's inventory. It's not a bad thing. Now, as the mayor has stated, um, the community is gonna decide what is done with that parcel. Uh, so that's the other good thing that in fact, the community on the west side, the Waimea community and, and the surrounding communities will have, uh, hopefully have an input 
and and a and a and a real sincere and genuine opportunity to determine how those uh, lands will be used. And I'm hoping there's an affordable housing component and affordable meaning affordable, not half a million dollars, but affordable. Hey, uh, Sandy, my sister, aloha. Uh, Sherry, Bob, Todd, Cindy, and Tom Goff, aloha, Lisa, Kimura as well. Uh, Got to upgrade the roads too. Yeah, you know, that's the other thing. So when I talked about infrastructure, you know, when you're going to purchase lands for housing, you got to make sure that it's, that it's infrastructure ready uh, because, you know, the land in and of itself, you can do nothing with it if you don't have water, you don't have road, you don't have a sewer. So that is the other part of the equation that needs to be addressed. And hopefully that'll be done very soon in an open council session. Hey, Kule, hello, how are you guys? So um, I know some of you guys here from Waimea, your thoughts, uh, uh, you know, I'm hoping that again, you know, I've always said that the only way we're going to be able to create affordable housing here in Kauai is if we have the land. And we turn the land over to affordable housing, uh, nonprofit affordable housing developers. That way, without the land costs, hey, Norman Holt Senior Skipa, aloha, Andre Ann, aloha, you guys. If the nonprofit developer is 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 has the land and and doesn't have to put the land costs in the equation, then I believe we can uh, truly develop affordable housing. And I, I'm talking affordable housing at the 275 300,000 dollar range uh you know any, anything below that in fact if we can go lower than that then we get some federal assistance it's it's even better i would really love to see some housing uh, affordable housing opportunities for the 50 percent to the 80 percent median income level I, I understand that everybody um on the higher end wants to buy homes but i i, I really would like to see some of these families that that, that you know our, our median income is so high right now that when you're talking 100 and 140 percent of median income, you're you're putting the homes way out of reach for the majority of the local families. That's what we're seeing, and 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 that's because land cost is always figured in to the equation. So with this 417 acres, um, awesome. We can we need the proper zoning. You can put up a lot of homes for a lot of local people. I'm all for that. Uh, hey Brian, thank you. Land and partnerships with nonprofits. No need to develop. No need to be developers. That's when it becomes non-affordable. Exactly. I, I'm talking the non There's non-profit uh, affordable housing developers, and and those are the ones that can make it happen. The county can't do it. I can tell you right now, the county can't do it. The the nonprofit sector can. It's done every single day throughout this country, and it can be done. This is an opportunity because we now have the land um, that we that we don't have to sell the land. Uh, or you don't have to figure it, the land cost into the price of the of the new home. So uh, we just got to stay on this and make sure that we pay attention, that we contribute, especially those of you on the west side, Waimea, uh, Hanapepe, Kekaha, all of those surrounding areas that, that may truly benefit uh, if, in fact, this is done right. And I have no reason to believe that it wouldn't. So uh, we'll see how that goes. And I will follow up on the uh, housing development fund to make sure that we're not impacting any current projects. Uh, so, yeah, if you guys know of any nonprofits out there, I mean, you know, it's, you know, the, the community will come together. The community will determine. I understand that the West Side uh, spent a lot of money, a lot of energy on uh, designing and planning a sports complex. I'm not against the sports complex. It's, it's just that, you know, we, we got to start looking at the needs. And if, Again, if nonprofits, if the community uh, organizations uh, utilizing federal money or state grants can uh, can can fund this sports complex, I have no problem with granting a parcel, a five-acre parcel, whatever it may be, uh, of, out of that 400 acres to do a nice sports complex. I think the west side is, is great for a sports complex. The weather's always nice out there. So we could do a lot of things with a sports complex on the west side. The only problem is the cost. And... Uh, we got to make sure that we we are not step or pushing some of our important priority projects on the side uh, for a sports complex. Much like we talked about the stadium on Oahu last year, uh, last week, $350 million for uh, fast tracking a brand new stadium on Oahu. Uh, no, there's a lot more priorities that, that we got to look at before we even think about building a brand new stadium on Oahu. So 
West Side is where there's a lot of locals, true island people, absolutely. And I, I can tell you, these 400 plus acres are going to help them if we do it right. If we can turn this over to a nonprofit that can turn around these homes at that at that truly affordable homes. Um, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. You are so much more engaged with what's going on with Kauai than our other elected officials, including the mayor. I voted for you and still think you've made a great mayor. Run again. Thank you, Stephen. Oh, smile, smile, smile. Thank you, man. I tried. I tried. Jason, Rhonda, Christy, aloha, you guys. Aloha. Thank you, Christy. I hope everything is going well in Maui. And Milani and Alfred, thank you for joining us. Now, we'll go from Waimea, and we'll go right over to Koloa, Kukuyula Park Development. Uh, you know, we all know Kukuyula, beautiful community, you know, for the rich. Um, and many, many years ago, and, you know, I, I can't remember, except I think it was back in 2004, 2004, I think it was my second term when we started. Well, get back to Kauai, Christy. It's not hard to come here anymore. Get over here. Um, so back in 04, I, there was, I think it was 2004. I remember it was my, my second term. Kukuyula came in to rezone their properties. They wanted to downsize, create more smaller lots, you know, going from the resort that they wanted to build initially and create these smaller, which is still gigantic, multi-million dollar home lots. So they had to come to the council, um, and we put in a lot of conditions uh, on the developer. Hey, Paul, and <clears throat> I'm not going to go into all the conditions because of time, but you know, one of them was the un affordable housing component that you see seeing being built along uh, Malihuna, uh, Malihua, Mal Maluhia Road on the left as you're going into Kolo Town. Um, they've had other conditions that they've were placed on, but the, the condition that we're talking about right now is the development and maintenance of a community park. Hey, Kolohe Kapu, aloha. A 20 acre community park that Kukuyula was to build, to develop and build, and take care of in perpetuity. In other words, that park was gonna be outfitted with the playground equipment and they were gonna take care of this. That was a condition. That was a condition that many of the people, hey, Dad, all the way from Washington, and Carly, aloha, you guys. Many, I mean, this thing went on for a long time. I, this, zone, this zoning application, I believe, went probably for a couple of years, uh, back and forth, putting conditions, council members uh, and the administration putting on it, uh, conditions, hearing from the people, and the people telling us what they wanted to see in Koloa. They wanted to see affordable housing. They wanted to see improved roads. They wanted to see better things for the Kolo community. Hey, Garrett, uh, no problem, Dad, no problem, you late. We're just getting started. We're just getting started. And that 20-acre park that was to be developed, built, and maintained by Kukuyula was a huge part of the community's acceptance, if you will, for that zoning application to go through. It, it was a tough couple of years. Uh, it wasn't easy for, for anybody. It was a lot of work, a lot of negotiations, but that 20-acre park was crucial. And I felt that the community made a lot of concessions and, and, and compromised quite a bit, but that 20-acre park was, was something that the community felt was important, it was important for the keiki, was important for the kupuna, was important for the community and as as a whole that in fact they would have this beautifully manicured park that they could take the kids that they could go hang out and and have some sporting events well kukiula is now proposing that they not build a park and that in fact that that they would be allowed to put up housing on that 20 acres um Mir, Meyer, Via, Aloha, Max, Aloha, you guys. So imagine this: you you put R20 zoning on that 20 acres as 400 homes. Now, trust me, I ain't against homes. I love homes. I would love to see 400 homes built on Kauai. Hey, Justin, but if you put 400 homes right across that development as being built. Can you imagine the traffic? Again, when I talked about earlier with the Waimea deal, infrastructure is crucial. You, you cannot run before you walk. 
and you're going to build 400 units in that small road, um, you're going to get some issues. Oh, I would love to have a park. I live Koloa. I got a six-year-old. Yes, Laurie. I mean, talk. I'm telling you, that park is like a, car a dangling carrot that the developers use to get the community buy-in. Um, Larry, that condition was put on probably, I gotta say, 15 years ago or so. I, I, I should have pulled the bill, but I don't have it. But I remember it being my second term, so probably 2005, maybe 2006, somewhere around there. So it's been a while and they haven't done it. They're also supposed to develop the park there by the, the, the boat harbor. Um, they're supposed to do some road extensions. Uh, some connector roads that hasn't been done yet kaino aloha so you know the county needs to get these people to fulfill the conditions or start finding them hey david you know they're they built their community and i don't know if you try to go into kukuyula but you know they got security it stops local people yes Rhonda, build the damn park so so this is this went on this went to the planning commission uh, last week and the planning commission the director's report we just praised the director's report report for the uh, salt pond investigation or the director's report a hope but in this one they said that they have no opposition from the community and that the parks in koloa are underutilized. now i don't live in koloa but i have been active in sports for a very long time we do not have enough park space in Koloa. We don't, so I'm not sure where that planner got that information, but all of the parks in Koloa are being, are overutilized by youth sports and, and it should be. So we need more parks. No need to hold, we need to hold strong. They were gonna build a park for what they build now. They need to build that park. They gotta build a park. Hey, Ron Victorino, aloha man, all the way from Austin, Texas. So this is where we at. Now, I understood that the planning commission wasn't aware of the community opposition and that in fact, they tabled the matter. I still haven't been able to confirm that or not. It appears that the administration may still be interested in moving forward. I don't know, and that's something that we gotta, we gotta, I gotta follow up on. Hey, Sugar and Jeff, aloha, you guys. Why does the county impose conditions and don't follow up on them? Good question. Community have his blessing with the conditions for the benefits of the Kolo community, and then this ridiculous. And the director said underutilized of the parks. I, I, you know, I don't know. Again, I should have got the report before today. This stuff I thought was pow, and then I just found out today that it's not. And in fact, uh, there, there'll be a community meeting tomorrow at the Koloa Neighborhood Center at 6.30 p.m. The community, the hui out there putting this together. The visit industry, the, the residents, the businesses are coming together to basically say, build the park. So they're gonna have some, some light refreshments. I think they get some pizza and some uh, sandwiches and some water and uh, I think the 300 t-shirts Build the park are, are going to be handed out to the first 300 people. So if you guys are from Koloa, <clears throat> hey, Jeannie and Chris, if you guys are from Koloa and you're interested, please show up at the meeting. Please show up at the meeting tomorrow, 630 Koloa Neighborhood Center. I'm going to fly down there right after football practice. I want to be there. The mayor is supposed to be there at 730. So uh, hopefully we can get, uh, get his take on, on what's going on over there. Bottom line is this. The condition was placed. The people deserve it. They expected it. I ex When I gave my I vote at the end for the final rezoning, that was the reason for that I vote was because of the conditions. That in fact, the impacts to the community with that development was going to be offset with some of the benefits that they were going to provide. The park being one of the big ones. So uh, I was there. I know. And I know what we agreed on. And I know the commitment that they made. The park needs to be built. Is there an expiration date for building permits? Let's say back in eight, eight, 1985, your property got approval. Uh, you know, I, I what, what can they use all approvals from 85? What don't they think change? You know, I, I don't know, hey, Zave, <clears throat> um, I, they, they're done. I, their permits are done. They still, now we gotta hold them accountable to the conditions of the, of, the, of the approval, the zoning amendment. And that is where the planning department has to go in and basically issue the notice like they do with 
the small time violators and, and taking this thing serious. Um, the accept, acceptance of their building permit should not be finality. Absolutely. I mean, the conditions have to be met. Um, I see they're building a cross wheel store, the cracks supposed to be affordable. I can't, but yeah, those are, those are going, that's a non, a nonprofit developer is doing that. That's going to be affordable. I don't have the prices. Uh, and, but I expect that to be in the affordable housing range, uh, truly affordable for the workforce. It's called workforce housing for those people that work in Kolo and Poipu. Uh, so we can get them close. Cutting clothes. I plow five. I'm going to try to make it and would wear the shirt everywhere. Yeah. Um, not necessarily talking about Kukuyula. Hey, Ross. Hello, Ross. Thank you for joining us. It's that the contract agreed when they need to fulfill, if they need in breach, then they need to stop. To, well, the, unfortunately, the permits were granted. Uh, there is some, there is some um, enforcement actions that the county can take because they violated the, the terms of, of the zoning. So it's basically a zoning violation. So you same thing, cease and desist. You serve them the paper, start the $10,000 a day fines uh, until the, the park is built. So, hey, Thomas, aloha. So that is, that's why Mea and Koloa, all in, in, a, in a relatively close proximity. Um, but the reason I brought this up is these are the kinds of things that you don't read about in a paper. This newspaper, the Garden Island, does not print this stuff. They print the good, the happiness, all the yay, yay, yay. But it's important that we stay in touch with what's really going on. Hey, Laurie. And uh, <clears throat> I cannot, I, you know, I, I, I'm only one person as well. I have no staff. But I try to keep up on what, what is important to, to those of you that live in these areas. So Kaloa tomorrow, 630, Kaloa Neighborhood Center, if you can make it, please go and let everyone know, let the, admin, let the county know that you want to build the park. Now, if you don't want the park and you want to see Kukuyula rezone that property so they can build homes, then, then you go and voice your opinion on that too. I don't envision too many people from Kaloa uh, going there to to uh, support the removal of that condition. I just don't. Hey, Dave, Mark, Janelle, and Chris. Aloha, Sister Chris, all the way from Seattle, Washington. All right. Okay. So, whew, 6 o'clock already. Hey, Janelle. Hey, type in you guys' comments. I'm curious about Waimea or Port, uh, Koloa. What do you guys think? You guys want the park? Let, let me know. Let me know because I plan to be there tomorrow. I'm going to try. Uh, we get game this Saturday. Our first game is this Saturday. Our Mighty Mind is going to play Hana Pepe. So we, it's game week. You know how that goes. We're prepping hard. We, I, I, I have to play hooky today to come and do my Facebook Live. So uh, I'll try to sneak out tomorrow a little bit, a little early, and then head out to Kolo Neighborhood Center. Kiki Nani and Stanley, thank you guys for joining us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, now we're going to go a little bit off of Kauai. Because I thought this, you know, uh, this is, you know, some of these things that that's going on in our state, it's so hard to believe. Uh, and many of you may have seen this story in the news last night. Moped owners on Oahu, your moped gets stolen. Yes, build a park. Hashtag everything you do, Instagram, Facebook, whatever you do. Hashtag build the park. Build the park. Build the park. Awesome. Jermaine Gaskins, my new business partner. Aloha, Jermaine. Thank you for all your help, my buddy. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hey, Jermaine, yeah, we, we're not talking business. We're talking local events here, man. Uh, glad you could join me, man. We'll chat soon, buddy. Is Carl involved in this? Carl who? Carl, I'm not sure. Natalie, Ebinger Haraguchi. Aloha, Natalie. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for joining us. So anyway, on Oahu. You know, if you get your purse stolen, you get anything stolen, the police recover it, it goes into evidence. When you're ready to, when the case is over, you get your evidence back, not a problem. You get your evidence back. On Oahu, if you have a moped and your moped gets stolen and the police recover it, and for whatever reason, you're not able to go to the scene when they recover it, uh, for whatever reason, it might be two in the morning, it might be three in the morning, you may be off island, you may be on the mainland. Mahi ai naihe, how are you, my brother? from another mother. Anyway, you. so the cops call a tow truck and they tow your moped to the tow yard. 
So now when you come back and you're about ready to, you, you find out that you get your messages and you now you go you go to pick up your moped, you got to pay. You got to pay the towing fee, the storage fee. How's that? You're a victim of a theft. Some scrub stole your moped, drove it around Honolulu, got busted. They took your moped. <laughs> so... And then you come back and you will claim it, and it's 200, 300, 400. One college student, her bill was 800 bucks. She couldn't, she didn't have the money. She's a college kid. So she, she's walking now because she can't afford to pick up her moped that was stolen by a piece of crap. Chris, Moana, Alicia, Ari, Lee Brun, and William. Aloha, you guys. How's that? How's that? So. <laughs> And the same applies for your car. See, KHPD, Honolulu Police Department is not going to store your stolen goods. So if you cannot claim it at the time of recovery, you're going to pay. You're going to pay. So I, I'm baffled because you get ripped off by a garbage. And then the cops take your bike and put it on a tow truck. And then you get screwed the second time. So anyway, I just, I saw that on news last night. I said, that'll make a great discussion for Facebook Live. un freaking believable un freaking believable So, you know, you think Kauai is bad? You, look at Honolulu. Don't get your moped stolen on Oahu. Uh, hey, Stan, aloha, brother. You know, you, you, these, these, these kids that are on mopeds, these kids that are, that they can't afford a car, or they don't want a car in Oahu, and and then they then they, they get, you know, forced to pay hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. I think that you said one guy's bill is at over a thousand, which was more than the moped, a new moped that he, the type of moped that he had, was more than what he can buy a new one. Un stinking real. So, I, I don't I I don't I don't get it, man. I don't get it. So, um, my dad had the contract for the same scenario. Yeah, I I just think that. There has to be a victim fund somehow. You know when you when you when you sentence these bad guys, make them pay an amount to the victim compensation fund. Hey Ron Hausman, what's up, buddy? All the way from Branson, Missouri. Woo! Hey, Thomas Gibson and Maynard Shea. Hello, you guys. Charge them a victim compensation. I think they already do. Up it, put that in a uh, in an account. If, if you got to pay to have someone, you know, I mean, within, within reason, okay, if you cannot get to the moped within three or four days, whatever that is, you know, the county will cover, then you charge the guy that stole your damn moped, and make him pay you back in restitution. Un, unbelievable, unbelievable. So anyway, now, this is, this one is very frustrating. Again, Honolulu, you may have seen this, the former cop, uh hey francis aloha former cop on oahu it was indicted in two seven uh, 2017. he was indicted his name is teddy van leberge and he was indicted on four counts of first degree sexual assault uh, uh i'm sorry four counts of first degree sexual assault and three third degree sexual assaults now this guy raped a five-year-old girl, five years old. Now, this all happened before he became a cop. He got indicted much later. He, <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to figure out when, I think the thing happened in uh, 2014 or whatever it was. So anyway, they, they plea bargain his case. They plea bargain his case. They reduced the first degree sexual assaults, the four counts, to, to second degree sexual assaults. And of course, this guy pled no contest. And then the prosecutor agreed that if he took that plea, they would not be seeking any jail time. So now, hey, Chad, I don't care what the plea bargain the judge does not have to honor the plea bargain 
you see they do what they got to do you you want to this is a five-year-old girl that was raped circuit court judge rowena some a woman said she approved the deal only after she, she received assurances that the victim and the victim's family agreed with it. Judge, your job is not to convey the wishes of the victim's mom and dad. Bethany, aloha. Your job is to make sure justice is served. That's your job. She said, the court doesn't take these matters lightly. These are serious offenses, she said. I don't know this judge. She sentenced him to five years probation for four counts of sexual assault in the third degree and three counts of third degree sexual assault and did not order him to serve any of the five years behind bars according to the terms of the plea agreement. She also ordered him to pay $735 in fees uh into a state special fund for crime victims and 700 dollars into a fund used to investigate and prosecute internet crimes and a 150 dollar probation services fee now he was facing mandatory 20 year terms for each of the four sexual assault in the first degree charges four so that was 80 years just for the four Sex assault first. He was facing 80 years, which means he would die in prison, which is what should have happened. According to the attorney, that's why he took the deal, because he takes the deal. He pleads, yeah, he got to report as a sex offender. Who cares? Yeah, he would never be a cop again. Who cares? He raped a five-year-old girl. Four counts, first degree, three counts, second degree. They plead it down to second degree and third degree, and they give them five years probation. Five years probation and pay, I don't know, two grand or so, two and a half, two, 20, 200, 2,500 bucks to all these different state funds. I don't see nothing in there to the victim. Five years probation for raping a five-year-old girl. Um, I hope he's on the sex offenders list yeah yeah he's on the sex offenders list i you know uh you know i i gotta tell you that's why we have judges you know judges you know you need to you need to protect the community you you, you protect the community this guy goes out and rapes another girl then what what if it gets worse you see the system is meaningless if there's no deterrent, you know. I, uh, I, if that was my daughter, uh, I can tell you, I would not be okay with it. I don't know. She said the judge says she got assurances from who, and I really don't care. I don't care if the mom and the dad came up and said, "Judge, we're okay with it, as long as he don't go back on the police force, and as long as he he." he registers as a sex offender we're okay no that's not your job your judge is not to satisfy the victim's parents your job is to keep the community safe this guy is a sexual predator and you give him five years probation i don't know how you guys feel about that um should have at least, also at least mandatory castration <laughs> Oh my God, uh, you know, hey, Andrew, you know, those are the kinds of stories that, um, hell, if it was my kid, I would be in jail. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I honestly don't know how I would react to that. I know that there is no way in hell. <laughs> I was young, I took a, a can of spam from Ishihara and I got six months probation. That's, that, I mean, that's what I'm saying. You got guys in jail right now that didn't hurt anybody. This is rape. I've always said that, you know, rape is in many cases worse than murder because 
murder the victim dies and it's it's trust me i've seen a lot in my years on the force i've seen murders and i've seen rape i've seen all kinds of stuff that most people should never see but that rape victim will live with that for the rest of her life i don't know hey addison it, 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 how can the judge just ignore the fact that this five-year-old girl who's probably um, 10 or 11 now got to live with this for the rest of her life, and this guy is out of jail, free to do it again. Who? Stressful. This is not the first case we discussed on my Facebook lives involving former cops that got away with some horrendous crimes on Oahu. Different judge, same outcome. Somebody got to start asking the question. Somebody got to start holding these judges accountable. Somebody's got to start getting these judges off the bench. Five years probation. You know, of course he's going to take the plea. Hey, you're facing 80 years. Mandatory now. Mandatory 20. Each count. You're facing 80, but if you plead to these lesser charges, yeah, you got to register. Yeah, you'll never be a cop, but you're only going to get probation. What do you think What do you think he's going to do? Unbelievable. Today I witnessed a defense attorney confront a rape victim in the hallway of a court even after the judge explicitly told her not to. Yeah, contempt of court put that attorney in jail. Then we wonder why we have so much lunatics walking around. Uh, you know, hey, Kalani Lee, what's up, my man? Anyway, that I just thought was insane. This story should be picked up by the national news media. Ugh. All right. So let's move on. How's this? Hawaiian Air flight attendants picketing. Because Hawaiian Airlines management is not willing to meet them on the table to discuss uh, their contract. They've had the same contract since 2012. It's been seven years. And they're basically saying, hey, Hawaiian Air, you're making a ton of money. You, you guys are bragging about your profits. Quarterly profits, ridiculous. We talk about that every quarter. We talk about it here on Facebook Live. And we're, we are the face of the airlines. I got to tell you. I cannot stand the, 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 the corporate management of Hawaiian Airlines. They're greedy pigs. Hey, Mo, Mona, but the staff, their flight attendants, their counter staff, their baggage people, the best that I've encountered. Hey, Chad and Justin, we've got a lot of friends, a lot of relatives working for Hawaiian Airlines. They, they work hard for that airline. They are the reason... Hawaiian Airlines is so successful. Come on. Aloha. And these guys don't want to even come to the table to negotiate some increases for these staff. Now, I know some of you will say, hey, tell them get another job. Hey, they get flight benefits, whatever. To each his own. I'm just saying that when the company enjoys the profits that Hawaiian Air is having, then yes, they share that with the stockholders but they should also share that with the employees that make them successful. My Hawaiian stock went from 60 to 25. They're losing money, in my opinion. Well, because they did it split. I, I, they're making money every quarter. Their net profits out of this world. So I'm not sure why, Jeff. You better go check. You better go check. I don't know. Something doesn't seem right. They said they returned majority of the net profits back to the shareholders. So. Anyway, I just thought that was kind of rude. You go out there and you brag about your net profits, and then you cannot even come to the table. You know, I'm not. I'm just saying, get to the table and listen, and come to an agreement. Who six fifteen already, man? We just chugging along. Look at my pops. If it was my daughters, that guy would be saying goodbye to Earth. Who, Dad? You the man? What if that was your son that got molested? You would do the same. I'm assuming. 
Anyone know what the starting thing? I don't know what it is, um, Rhonda. You know, I'm just saying that. 2012 was the last contract. It's probably time for them to go and get a new one. Um, greedy bastards, they're going to lose money if they lose their wonderful employees. Absolutely. I mean, that, that's just, you know, that's just what it is. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Renato, aloha. Now, this story... You know, we can learn so much from others, and I believe others can learn so much from us here in Hawaii. We do a lot of good things well, and we do some things not so well. So when we do things not so well, and we find some other jurisdiction that's doing something well, we should we should learn. So this story makes so much sense. Yeah, and you wonder, how come we're not doing this? Indiana School District, they waste a lot of food. Like here, hey, Lauren, aloha, brother. They, they, have, they cook more food than they serve. A lot of food gets thrown away because they have to, because they cannot give it away. Our hotels got, cannot give it away. They got to throw it away. So the pigs are happy here in Hawaii, or especially on Kauai but statewide because of our Department of Health rules. But this Indiana School District, what they do is they take the unused ca uh, cafeteria food and they make take-home meals for their students that need. At In this school district, the kids get, like here, you get breakfast and lunch, and it's not always free, but you they, they provide breakfast and lunch. Hey, Tony. But during the weekends, these kids, some of them, a lot of them go hungry. They don't, I've, I've said this so many times when we talked about the, the state taking away the food because their account was zero, not allowing them to eat. Well, this district, what they do is they take the unused foods and they make individual frozen meals. How's that? They take the unused cafeteria food. Hey, Sunny, Lena Ala, hello, you guys. And they make individually wrapped frozen foods. So every Friday, they have a list of students that qualify. And they are all, they're all given a backpack with eight individually wrapped frozen meals for the weekend. How is that? Now imagine, imagine if we could do that here in Hawaii. Imagine, now we know for a fact that the cafeteria cooks more than they serve. That's why I get so pissed off when they take the food from the kid's hands when his account is zero and they throw it away. Because <clears throat> you know that they have enough. So they rather give that to a pig farmer for free. Rather than, hey, Farron, how are you? You got a break from, oh, six got a break from practice right on Farron. so what this school district has done is they 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 take these foods and they they make they freeze it and they put them in a little box and then they send the kid home on fridays with eight of these food packs frozen food packs genius genius hello school started a pantry every second and fourth friday Struggling families of Kolo school students can get a bag of groceries. They do it in Kekaha as well. Thanks, Laurie. Thank, thank you. And now imagine if we, we expanded that to the hotels and restaurants that have all this extra food that they throw in the dumpster. Imagine if we could allow them, if our state would have a heart and and you know everybody's so afraid of liability what do you think what's more important that kid is not eating at home he's not eating that's a liability money bog aloha so from from wasted food to eight meals frozen meals for the kid during, for the weekend unbelievable now 
that Indiana school district is in it for the kids. They're not just talking, they're doing. And I'm just thinking, man, now they utilize a local nonprofit to do this. Obviously the school can't do it. So you get a nonprofit who got the proper insurance and the clearances from their department of health, and they come in and collect all of the foods and they properly freeze it and pack it and, and get it out. So yes, the, the state doesn't even do it. Their county, their city doesn't even do it. It's done by a nonprofit. But think of the kids that they're helping with stuff that we would throw away. I That's genius. And Hawaii better, better start thinking like this. Because we all talk about helping our kids. Hey, Lionel, unbelievable. So I'm going to follow up. Um, hey, hey, my grace, aloha. How you doing? Peggy, aloha. If someone gets sick, someone, you know, they're getting sick without food. I'm. That's what I'm saying. Obviously, you, you got to have some regulation and you got to have some oversight. But it can be done. It's being done. It's being done. So why why would we not try? to utilize the food that's going to the pigs and getting it into the hands of not just students, but families that are struggling, families that are, 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 that are, are not eating, families that are so broke that they cannot buy food or they got to choose food over medication. We all heard the stories. I know it's true. You do. Hey, Rick, cousin Rick from Oahu. Aloha, man. So listen, Let's try to figure out how we can make it work and not worry about how it won't work or it can't work. No, let's not, let's get that can't out of the vocabulary. Take a plan like this, a program, and figure out how we can make it work here in Hawaii. I, I, I think it's genius. I think I said that 10 times, because it's genius. Whoever came up with that, I, you know, I've, I've always questioned that, like, why can't we give the food away? Oh, cannot, ooh, no way. Health department, man, once once a kid touch a plate, gotta go in the trash, like, why? Why? All that extra food at the end of the day, why you can't you, why can't you box it and give it away? So anyway, rewinding down, couple of, couple of events uh, coming up. Hey, Carol, aloha, you guys. Thanks for joining you guys again. Every Wednesday, 5.30 to 6.30. We appreciate you guys joining us on here. Uh, isn't there some liability if the pigs get sick? Yeah. I'm sure there's an attorney that would sue sue the, the school if their pig died of salmonella or something. I don't know. <laughs> Good point, Larry. I love it. So I like you guys, man. That's why so real. So real. That's how everybody should be. Hey, Rando, aloha. So uh, every Wednesday, 5.30 to 6.30, the YouTube channel, Mel Raposo. Subscribe, hit the bell next to it so you get notified every time we go, uh, we pop up a new video. This week, Saturday, I talked about, uh, hey, Karen, um, Pop Warner Jamboree this Saturday, Bedina Stadium. Come check it out, support the kids. If you got family or friends, come on by, watch a game. We will be playing Hana Pepe. I'm excited. The kids are excited. It'll be a great, great uh, kickoff to our season. Um, it's five bucks to get in. You can buy a season ticket for 15 bucks and they get you in all the games. Well, 10 games. So you save a ton of money if you buy the season ticket and it benefits a damn good cause, the Pop Warner. All right. Hey, thanks, Minard. We're not done. A little bit more. September 6th, Salsa Fiesta Familia Night. This is put on. This is free. Free. F R E E. If it's free, it's for me. Put on by the Kekahua o Kalama Lama. This is September 6th, 6 to 9.30 at the Kauai Athletic Club in Kapahi. This is being put on by, or uh, sponsored by Haleopio and the Kauai Athletic Club. Listen, guys, crafts for the kids, photo booth, a DJ, heavy refreshments, They're giving away some prizes, and listen, free salsa lessons for everybody. September 6th, 6 to 9.30, Quiet Letty Club, free. 
get the cake. You know, you kids, get them together. Make it a family night. Get them down there. That's what this is. Salsa Fiesta, Familia Night. Salsa Fiesta with the family. Come on down. Uh, Kauai Letter Club in Kapai. Mahalo to Kauai Letter Club. And uh, Haleo Pio Von Ramos. Thank you guys for doing this for the kids. On stinking believable all right paul i'll see you there too buddy and then of course the turtle ball we talked about this a couple of weeks ago if you've never been to a turtle ball you gotta come it's fun um september 21st is where everybody dresses up in the cultural filipino garb the turtles and the barong tagalog and they they parade around the place and they'll pick a winner nice best turno best barong best couple, all of that stuff. I won the, one year I won the best Barong Tagalog. I got that from a friend and I won the big trophy, I won the cash prize, awesome. So um, turn the ball September 21st if you need information, very simple, just message me and, uh, and I'll get you the information on the tickets. Uh, okay, also on the salsa night, if you need information, um, 977-8212, um, and go ahead and check it out. All right, Michelle, thanks for joining us, and Stella, aloha, you guys. Thank you, guys, Sherry Ann, also. Uh, we're going to be signing off. Thank you, guys, again, for another great hour of discussion. I appreciate you guys participating. Got some hot issues going on here on Kauai and throughout the state. Listen, every Wednesday, 5.30, you guys, come on, man. Let's, if you want me to look into something, shoot me a message, an email. appreciate you guys always sending me information, questions. Uh, I promise you, give me this information, the questions. I'll do the research, and we will get it on next week, Wednesday. We will uh, keep this thing going. As long as I got people willing to listen, man, we'll keep it going, all right? So we'll see you guys next week, Wednesday, 5.30. Aloha, you guys. Don't forget YouTube, Mel Raposo. Subscribe and hit the bell. We'll see you guys next week. Love you guys. Have a great evening. God bless.